to use map files, that is, levels built from BSP brush volumes in Unity, they need to be converted into a suitable format. DAE, FBX, OBJ, etc. For the conversion process to be effective, in Radiant, game-specific entities will need to be stripped, the level encased in a cork hull, and then compiled as BSP only, which is then recompiled with the convert switch set to ASE. The resulting model can then be imported into a 3D application for prep and export to FBX, DAE, etc. So exactly how is this done? First, all the relevant game entities will need to be stripped from the level. This includes models as well as game-specific entities and objects, lights, player and AI targets, triggers and other brush-based entities. A quick way to do this is to use the World Filter option from the View menu. This hides brush volumes and leaves entities free to be selected and removed. To do that, simply draw out a brush volume large enough to encompass all the entities in the scene, then click Select Inside to highlight, and then from the Edit menu, Delete. Once done, check the scene for any stray entities, then disable the World Filter, making the previously hidden brush volumes visible again. In addition to stripping the game entities, it may also be necessary to remove clip brush volumes. This can be done by selecting them individually or as groups, or by selecting an individual face, then using Shift A to select type. This selects brush volumes of a set type based on the texture selection. Remove any volume that's superfluous to requirements in Unity. Next, replace the Info Player Start entity. Its location or position doesn't matter so long as it's inside the level. Then draw a brush volume large enough to encapsulate everything in the scene. Make sure this volume is textured in cork, which should also be applied to unwanted surfaces in the level. Then click the CSG Hollow button to create a box around the map. It's important that everything that needs to be exported for use is contained within this box, so double check the X, Y and Z axes to make sure everything is inside. Then once done, save everything as a map file. With a map file now available, it needs to be compiled. This can be done within Radiant itself or using third-party applications like Q3Map2 tools. Simply select the map file to be compiled and then in the BSP menu select Normal then click Run BSP. This produces a BSP file that then needs to be compiled using the ASE convert switch. Under the BSP options Select Custom, check or tick the Convert Option switch and type ASE into the input field. Again, click Run BSP to recompile the level and generate the ASE model. With the map converted to a model, it can now be imported into a 3D application of choice. For Blender, the most reliable way to do this is to import using Blender 2.49 and the GUFOS ASE import script. Simply open that into a text editor, run the script, find the ASE file, which is saved by default to the Maps folder, so it may need moving or copying to the Project Development folder. Select, and then Import. The file will be passed, which will take some time depending on its size, and then displayed in 3D view once done, completing the import process. The mesh can then be worked on, edited and optimised for use in Unity. The first thing to do before editing the mesh is to set up the scene's properties. From View, View Properties, increase the clip end value to accommodate the size of the level. 
Note that radiant-based models will be dozens of times larger than Blender's default unit of measurement. Then finally change scale to 8, make sure divisions is set to 8, and set the lines optionally to any value to increase the size of the grid. Looking at the model itself, it will be composed of dozens, if not hundreds or thousands of individual objects based on the compile settings used during the convert process. These can be minimized by using the meta and patch meta options. Once initial scene properties are set up and mesh checked, it can be saved. Once the import process is complete and the file saved as a dot blend, it can then be opened in a more current version of the application. Whilst doing this, it's best to deselect load UI to discard all the old settings and properties. These can be re-established once the file is open. To do that, from View Properties, scroll down to the Display section and set both Scale and Subdivisions to 8 and optionally set lines to a higher value to increase the size of the grid. Then finally under view increase the end clip value until the entire level is visible. These settings replicate radiant making it easier to edit and modify the mesh. Using Blender 2.49 as the import vector Material information will be missing from the scene, despite being present in the raw ASE file. This means materials and their associated textures and images will need to be regenerated and reassigned to each of the objects within the scene. So select an object, in material properties click new, change the name, for example the bitmap to be assigned to the UV. Similarly in texture properties click new, then in the image subsection, click open and browse to the image to be assigned to the material. Shown, for example, is a pillar texture from Return to Castle Wolfenstein. This process needs to be repeated for however many materials need to be assigned to the mesh. This might mean one object being selected whilst all the necessary materials are generated and made ready for assignment. Although objects do not import with material information, they do import with UVs. In other words, viewing the mesh in texture mode, it will display white, indicating that no image has been assigned to the UV map. This means that once materials are set up and textures available, they can be applied as normal by editing each individual mesh. For complex levels with a lot of objects, this may take some time to do, so it may be better to select and join objects of the same type together so they can be textured at the same time as a single unit. To do this, simply shift right click each subunit and then use Ctrl J to join them together. Once done, edit as normal to assign the image to the UV map. Assuming nothing untoward happened during the conversion and import process, UVs should appear on the meshes as determined by their application on brushwork in Radiant. This means scale, rotation and location generally being an exact match one to one. Once materials are set up and textures assigned, the level needs to be prepped by removing redundant surfaces, which in texture display mode will appear white Simply select and delete, and then optionally organizing the scene based on texture or material type. In other words, using the layer manager, move objects UV mapped with a particular image to the same layer. Once sorted, the individual objects can be joined together to form a larger element. Remove redundant materials so the only reference that remains is the one associated with the image assigned to the UV map of the larger object. Joining meshes together, it will also be necessary to remove duplicate vertices, so in the tool shelf click the Rem Doubles button, and then establish mesh smoothing by marking edges 
or using Auto Smooth. Then finally before export, select all the objects to be exported and rotate them on the X axis a negative 90 degrees. Apply rotation and scale, then rotate back upright before export. This latter aspect is optional, but is useful to avoid rotational issues when models are loaded into Unity. To export to FBX, select everything in the scene, making sure one object is active. Then in the Export Properties, activate Selected Objects, disable everything else in the Other Property Options, and then click the Export button. Once the level is exported from Blender, it's simply a question of dropping it into the Unity Project folder for it to appear in the Asset Browser. From here, the item can be further edited by expanding and selecting each of the individual components of the exported mesh. For example, to apply materials, textures, or other object-based properties. A word about copyright. It goes without saying that because BSP files can be converted to ASEs, it's possible in theory to convert any BSP level. If the maps or levels belong to a third party, seek permission before use and or check that content can be used freely.